What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network, uh, where we continue our reading of the fantastically good uh, Bitcoin Optech Group newsletter. Today, number four, July 17th, 2018. This week's newsletter includes news and action items about a feature freeze for the next major version of Bitcoin Core. Increasing transaction fees, a likely renaming of the proposed Sikash no input flag, and several notable recent Bitcoin Core merges. Action items. At least at last chance to advocate for any almost ready new features to be included in Bitcoin Core version 0 0.17, expected to be released in August or September 2018. The feature freeze date mentioned in newsletter number three has been published, has been pushed back a week to July 23rd. Dashboard items, transaction fee increasing. For transactions targeting confirmation within 12 blocks or sooner, the recommended fee has risen up to three times compared to this time last week. Nodes with default settings still have plenty of room in their mempools, so the trend could quickly reverse itself. It's recommended to be careful making cheap transactions until fee rate drops again or unless you can wait potentially several weeks for the consolidation transaction to confirm. News. Coin selection group discussion. Under discussion this week was Bitcoin pull request, which adds an option to the wallet that causes every output paid for, to the same address to be spent whenever any one of those outputs is spent. A motivation for this pull request is to enhance privacy, as otherwise spending multiple outputs received to the same address in different transactions will create a privacy reducing link between those transactions. But this option also automatically consolidates inputs, which may be of specific interest to Bitcoin businesses that frequently receive multiple payments to the same address. That includes, for example, donations on Telecoin. Continuing discussions about Schnorr signatures. No faults have been identified with the proposed BIP described in last week's newsletter, but two developers have proposed optimizations, one of which was run afoul of security considerations and another one of which will likely not be added as it's a minor optimization comes at the trade-off of removing different minor optimizations. Naming of the SIGHASH no input BIP 118 described a new optional SIGHASH, that is a, a signature hash, a SIGHASH flag, that does not identify which set of Bitcoins is being spent. The main thing used to determine whether the spend is valid is whether the signature script, the witness, fulfills all the conditions of the pubkey script encumbrance. For example, in the L2 smart contract platform aimed augmenting Lightning Network, Alice and Bob sign each change of balance in a payment channel with this new SIGHASH flag so that when they want to close the channel, either one of them can use the transaction with the final balance to spend from the transaction with the initial balance. However, naive use of this new SIGHASH flag can cause unexpected loss of funds. For example, Alice receives some Bitcoin to a particular address. She then spends those Bitcoin to Bob using the new SIGHASH flag. Later, Alice receives more Bitcoin to the same address. Now Bob can now steal those Bitcoin by reusing the same signature that Alice used before. Note that this only affects people using the new Sikash flag 
it does not affect unrelated transactions. The discussion this week on the Bitcoin DEF and Lightning DEF mailing list was about naming the Zcash flag so that developers don't use it accidentally without realizing its dangers. A rough consensus seems to have formed around the name Zcash no input unsafe. Danger zone! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Notable Bitcoin core merges. There is one that creates a, the create multi-sig RPC can now create a paid to script hash wrapped SegWit and native SegWit addresses. Another merge supports for the RISC V CPU architecture added. The next merge, a new serialized SHA-256 function that takes advantage of CPU extensions and knowledge of specific data inputs used by Bitcoin Core, such as the very common case where the input data is exactly 64 bytes, as used for every calculation in a Bitcoin Merkle tree. This can provide up to nine times speed improvement over Bitcoin Curve version 0.16 for cases where the new code applies and is supported by the user's CPU. The code mainly helps to speed up validation of blocks, both historic blocks during the initial sync and new blocks during normal operations. The next, op, uh, the next merger, the Verified Transaction Out Proof RPC, is no longer vulnerable to particular expensive attacks against simple payment verification proofs publicly disclosed in early June. The attack was considered unlikely given that much cheaper attacks or roughly equal effectiveness are well known. See also merged pull request that adds extra information that can be used to defeat the attack to the get block RPC. None of, the mitigation, none of this mitigates the attack for actual SPV clients. Run your own node. Next pull request is new get ZMQ notification RPC that returns information about all active C ZMQ notification endpoints. This is useful for software that layers on top of Bitcoin D. Next pull merger, increase the maximum size of transactions that will be relayed by default from 99,999 virtual bytes to 100,000 virtual bytes. Oh, that one virtual byte was very much needed. <laughs> Please subscribe to this phenomenal Optag newsletter and receive the most dense and amazing stuff that is happening all in Bitcoin one week uh, every time in your news box or email inbox. Piers, thank you very much for joining me here today again. And again, thank you so much for the Bitcoin Optech Group for providing this plethora of information uh, that is no bullshit at all. Piers, thank you very much for joining and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.